In this 3D rigid body equilibrium problem, we're trying to find the reactions at the collar at A and the roller at B. So we want reactions at A and B. So to do that, we're in static equilibrium, we're going to want a free body diagram. So the first thing we need to do is choose our object of interest. What are we going to isolate from its supports? Well, first we want to look at what are we trying to find. We want the reactions at A and B. So we want to make sure that whatever object we keep, we're going to be able to see what's happening at A and B. So in this case, the object we're going to want is going to be this part of the object that goes from A to B. So notice I am not including the roller. Let me just cross that out for right now. The roller is not going to be part of my free body diagram. That's not part of my object. That way I can see what the roller does to my object. And I'm not including this pipe support that goes through the collar. That way I can see what that does to the collar at A on the object that I kept. So just that blue curve is going to be what I want to keep in my picture. So I'm going to use the given coordinate system and keep that. So A is going to be the origin of this system. Then it's going to come down here. And then it's going to go along this negative x axis to B. Right, so that is the object I want to keep. Let me just get rid of some of these markings here. So get back to the original picture. Okay, so I want to put on here every force, external force, external moment first that is if impacting the object that I kept. So I'll copy those down exactly. So at this point, I'm going to have that 600 Newton force acting in the negative Z direction. And that's going to act, I'll call this point D for the picture. And that's going to be in meters at negative 0 0.4, 1.60 meters. That's a negative 0.4. And at point B, uh, I'll, I'll come back to point B. Uh, the other external force I want to include and copy exactly is this 800 Newton force acting at point, I will call this point C. And that is at zero in the X, zero point eight and zero in the Z direction. So externally, those are the only two forces in the picture. There's no other uh, applied forces or applied moments. So now I'll go and I will assess the reactions. Uh, I'll start at B, that will be simpler. I have a roller at B. The roller will allow my object, again, I'm ignoring A, but looking just at B right now, the object can move along the X, in the XY plane. The roller is not stopping any motion in the XY plane. However, my object cannot translate along the Z axis. And that's just because it's a roller. Specifically, it cannot move in the negative Z. The roller must be pushing on it to prevent that from happening. So I am going to have this, ver this force in the Z direction, I will call BZ. So translation is allowed in the XY plane, so no forces in the XY plane from B, but translation is prevented along the Z axis and it must be pushing up on our object, so BZ is going to be in the positive Z direction. So that's the only translation prevented is along the Z axis. Now, think about rotation. We can rotate at least a little bit about the x-axis. The roller doesn't stop that. It doesn't stop it around the y, and it doesn't stop any rotation around the z. So at point B, there are no couples from that roller because all rotations, at least small rotations, about any axis are not prevented around B. Right, so finally, I'll put down the coordinates of B are at negative 0.8. 1.60 meters. Now we can go to point A. Uh, so at point A, we have that collar connection. We are not including the pipe that runs through the collar. So we want to see what does that pipe do to the piece of collar that we kept. 
So let's think about translations first. Uh, in the x direction, which I'll now label, along the x direction, that collar, again, we're ignoring what's happening at B or anywhere else along our object, the collar can move along the x-axis. The collar allows that translation, so there will not be a force in the x-axis because motion is not prevented. However, if we try to pull the collar along the y direction, it's going to hit that pipe. We cannot translate it along y, therefore we are going to have a y component of our force that we'll call a y. Now, still thinking about translation, let's think about the z direction. We're going to have here, can we move the pipe in the z direction at a? No, again, it's going to bang into the pipe it's, ar it's around. Translation is prevented, so there must be a z component of this force as well. Uh, again, notice here, a y, a z, I am just going to assume that they are acting along the positive directions of the axis, because really, I can't move it in the positive or negative y because of the collar. I can't move it in the positive or negative z because of the collar either. So for simplicity, I will assume positive direction. All right, so two components of translation are prevented. One is allowed. Now we can think about rotation. So can it rotate around the x-axis? Yes. At A, it can, again, ignoring B, but A alone, nothing prevents it from rotating around the x. It's a circular shaft, and it's a circular collar, so it can freely rotate around the x direction, so no moment is present. Can we rotate it around the y axis? No, uh, we can't because that collar is going to again hit the pipe if we try to rotate it around the y axis. So because rotation is prevented, there will be a couple. And I will do it as a circular arrow here, and I will call that MY. Right, so notice I'm assuming it's acting that's supposed to be counterclockwise around the positive y axis. It can't rotate clockwise or counterclockwise, but I will assume positive. And now moving on to the z-axis, can we freely rotate it at A around the z-axis? No, again, it's going to hit the collar. So we're going to have what we will assume is a positive couple I'll call MZ. Now again, around the y-axis, counterclockwise or clockwise is prevented. I'll assume positive counterclockwise. And around Z, clockwise, counterclockwise, both prevented. I will assume the positive direction counterclockwise. Right, so if we look at our free body diagram, just as kind of a quick check here, we are going to have uh, unknowns right now of BZ, AZ, AY, MZ, and MY. And if we count that up, that is five. Typically, not always, but typically for problems in this course, we're going to see six unknowns in our free body diagram. Uh, because we can get six equations out of each 3D rigid body free body diagram. And we have five here. We're going to see that this is correct, but if you come across having five unknowns, seven unknowns, it is a good habit just to check, make sure you're modeling things correctly at this step. Did you miss something? Did you not consider a motion that was prevented? Um, because again, we could have five, we could have seven. It's just a little bit more unusual. We're going to see in a minute why five is correct and how the math does work out. So now we can move on to our equilibrium equations. <clears throat> uh, if we see our free body diagram, every force or couple is acting along a coordinate direction. So we actually don't need any unit vectors uh, for this problem. Everything's going to be along the x, the y, or the z only. So that makes our lives a little bit simpler. So we can jump right into some equilibrium equations. So out of habit, uh, let's start with the force equations, and I'll do these as scalars. So along each coordinate direction, x, y, and then z. So in the x direction, uh, what do we have here? There is no ax, so that does not, there's nothing in the x direction at a. There's the applied forces are acting in the z. There's no x at b either. In fact, nowhere in this problem do we have a force acting in the x direction. So our right hand side is also zero. So we get that zero, we know it has to sum to zero because we're in static equilibrium, and there's no forces acting in the x direction. So we get zero equals zero, which that is true, which better that better be the case if we got like six equals zero, there's a problem here. Zero equals zero is true. Um, so this equation is true, it just doesn't add any information 
to the problem. However, remembering back to the free body diagram, there's only five unknowns, and our first equation is actually not a linearly independent equation. It's just uh, automatically true. So this first equation actually doesn't, won't even count in our set of equations. So we have kind of, I'll say, zero equations and zero unknowns so far. If we go in the y direction, we're in equilibrium, it has to add up to zero. Now we have stuff going on. We are going to have a y. We are going to have, in the y direction, uh, the applied forces, nope, there's no b y either. So actually all we have is a y equals zero. Okay, so this is true, and we've discovered that the value of a y for equilibrium must be zero. So when we draw in the free body diagram, our forces or our moments, we're really saying there's the potential for these moments or forces to be there in order to hold this in static equilibrium. So a y motion would be prevented, but we see that nothing's actually trying to pull in the y direction. So the a y force that could be there in this scenario is zero. Now, if we had an applied force in the y direction, uh, then a y would be non-zero. But under this loading scenario, a y turns out to be zero. So one unknown solved for. And the z direction. Here we'll have our AZ, we'll have negative 800, we'll have minus 600, and plus BZ. So in equation three, we have two unknowns and one equation we have not yet used for AZ and BZ. So I'm not going to try to solve anything yet. Uh, I'm going to move on and write more equations. But so far we have one of our five unknowns solved for. I want to give myself plenty of room here for my moment equation. So notice this is going to become equations 4 through 6. Because I'm going to take the moment about a point, and it's going to be a vector equation that I will then split up into three scalar equations. So I'm going to take the moment about a point, and that's going to equal the zero vector. Now I can take the moment about any point in the picture, A, B, C, D, or anything else that I want. However, it's typically going to be simplest if I take the moment about a point where the most unknown forces are acting. So in this case, at point A, where I have that collar, I have A, Y, and A, Z. Now it does turn out we know what A, Y is already. However, uh, A, Z we don't know. So I would recommend taking the moment around point A for the simplest calculation here. Also, A is nice because it's the origin, so calculating the position vectors is also going to be easiest. But again, I want to reiterate and emphasize, we can take the moment about any point and still get the right answer. A is just going to be mathematically the easiest. So we need to account for everything causing a moment around point A. That's going to be forces that are have their line of action not pass through A, and any couples in the system. So let's start with couples in the system because it's really easy to forget about them otherwise, so I like to start there. There are two couples in the system. There's MY and MZ. Those are the only, apply, those are the only couples directly in the system here. Those go right into this equation. And we have to remember this is a vector equation, so we need to attach everything needs an I, a J, or a K. So we're going to have MY and that is acting around the j direction. And we assumed it was positive, so it's positive myj. And we have mz, that acts around the k direction. Again, we assume it's positive. So notice here, I am just directly including the couple. I don't multiply by a distance, and I do need to include the axis about which they act. Also, note here, I drew MY and MZ acting at A, because they are, I'm taking the moment about A. So just because I'm taking the moment about A does not mean I should not include any moments or couples that act at A. Those will get included the same no matter what point I take the moment about. However, when we're talking about forces, well, AY and AZ, their lines of actions pass through A, so those will not get included in this calculation but the moments do. 
All right, now I am going to have, uh, let me just mark A here. I am going to have cross products because I have three forces that do not have their lines of action pass through A. So I'll have that 800 Newton force. So that's going to be RAC cross negative uh, 800 K plus RAD cross negative 600 K. Make that a little bit bigger so we can see it. Plus uh, that third force, the BZ, that's going to be RAB cross BZ. And that's in the K direction. All right, so notice here again, everything is a vector. This is a vector quantity. It's the moment about to point. I have those two couples at A, the reaction couples, MY, MZ, attached to their unit vector, the axis about which they act. And I'll have three cross products to go through. Each of those is a vector of displacement or position vector crossed with a force, which is also going to be a vector. This is not going to be too bad because each one has a component only in the K axis. So let me expand this a little bit. So MYJ, I'll just copy down. MZK, copy down, plus. So three cross products to go through. RAC is going to be, well, this isn't too bad because uh, A is the origin, so it's just C minus A is 0, 0 0.80. 0. This will be in meters. And then the force is 0, 0, negative 800 and that's in Newtons. Okay. RAD is going to be my I, J, and my K, and that's zero, negative 0.4, 1.6 and zero meters, that's RAD, D minus A, zero, zero, negative 600 Newtons. And finally, RAB, that's going to be negative 0 0.8, 1.60 meters. And B is going to be 0, 0, BZ in the positive Z direction, or the positive K direction. All right, so it's a cross product. So it's two vectors will come in, and one vector will come out. Now I can expand these determinants. This MYJ comes along for the ride, MZK also. Right, now I can expand this first determinant. If I look, um, I'm going to have an I component is going to be 0.8 times negative 800 is going to be a negative 640I. And if I look at the J, that's going to be zero and the K is going to be zero. So this whole determinant is just going to come out to be negative 640I. Now, if I go to my second determinant, in the I direction, I will have 1.6 times a negative 600. That was going to give me a negative 960I. And in the J direction, I'm going to have a negative 0.4 times a negative 600, but I subtract the J term, so I'm going to get a negative 240J from that. And the K is going to give me zero. So we just have to be careful with the signs there. We have a negative I component, and we're going to have a negative J component. And then the last determinant here, when we go to do the I, we'll have 1.6 times BZ in the I direction. And in the J direction, we are going to have here a negative 0.8 times BZ, but that gets subtracted, so it's going to be plus 0.8 BZ. And the K will be zero. So yeah, I didn't show all the details about the cross product here uh, and doing the expanding the cofactors, but just be very careful with the signs that we have. Right, now what I want to do is I want to combine my like terms. So I want to gather all of my I's, so a negative 640, a minus 960, a plus 1.6 BZ, I, and the J's, 
Putting those together, I have my. I am going to have a negative 240. And I'm going to have, oh, up here, I forgot a j when I was putting that together. Uh, so I'm also going to have the plus 0.8 bz. And those all have j, so I can put the j on the outside. And finally, the k terms. Uh, I have an mz. And looking through the rest, that's the only thing that has a k. Right, now that I've grouped in front of the i, the j, and the k, I'm going to be able to now get my three scalar equations out of this. So what I want to do is because I know that the zero vector is 0i, zero 0j, zero 0k, zero I can equate the coefficients. So 0, this is my i terms, is negative 640 minus 960 plus 1.6 bz. Right, so this is the coefficient in front of i on the left, 0, equals the coefficient in front of i on the right, which is just the stuff that was inside here. Right, now the same thing. I have 0j on the left equals my j terms on the right. Now notice in 4 and 5 so far, I don't have the i. That got canceled out. I don't have the j in 5. That got canceled out left and right as well. And 6, 0k on the left equals mz on the right. So again, the coefficients in front of k are 0 on the left and mz on the right. So that's how I get those other three scalar equations out of this. Now we can do our solve step. Now we already have from 2, I'll just copy it back down here, that ay was equal to 0. So just scrolling back up, that's what we got when we summed forces in the y direction. Equation 3 we're going to hold off on. We have az and we have bz. But now we have these new equations that we can work with. So let's do equation 6. That's going to be easy. mz is equal to 0 as well. So again, uh, rotation around z would have been prevented, uh, but doesn't need to exert any couple because nothing in the loading wanted to rotate it around that z axis. So that's done. If we look at equation 4, the only unknown in equation 4 is bz. So the math has become pretty simple. And we get that bz is 1,000 newtons. And our assumption of positive z direction was correct. I'm not going to draw the direction because it's, it's tough to tell in 3D. Uh, but that 1,000 newtons is indeed in the positive z axis like our assumption was. Again, if it was negative, that just means our assumption was the opposite. That's perfectly fine. What I can do with this is I can put this into equation 5 now because I know bz. So equation 5, knowing bz, the only thing I don't know is then my. And that is going to come out to a negative 560 newton meters. So four of my unknowns are solved for. The only one left, I have to go back up to equation three and apply my knowledge of BZ. Back up here in equation three, that was the sum of the forces in the Z direction. AZ is the only thing I don't know now that I know BZ, so I can solve it for AZ. So solving that for AZ, AZ comes out to a positive 400 newtons. So these are all five of the reactions I had in this problem. Uh, it turned out there were only five, and that was okay because I only had five linearly independent equations. Now equation one, where I was summing forces in the x direction and got zero equals zero, it does have to be true. It's good that I checked it, but it's not a linearly independent equation. So I had five linearly independent equations for five variables which were the five reactions. And it turned out two of them were zero. We didn't know that going in. Uh, again, when we draw in the free body diagram the reaction forces, reaction moments, we're really modeling potential forces and couples that those supports can exert. But it really depends all on how the object is loaded if they need to be non-zero for static equilibrium. In this case, two of them did not need to be non-zero.